afternoon, everyone. We're gathered today on the traditional territory of the signatories of Treaty 6, and I acknowledge the Métis people who share a deep connection with this land. My name is Marie Renault, and I'm the MLA for St. Albert, and I'm the critic for Community and Social Services. I'm joined today by my colleague, Heather Sweet, MLA for Edmonton Manning, and the critic for Rural Economic Development, Agriculture and Forestry. We're here today because of a new report out from the University of Toronto that shows 853,000 people in our province live in food insecure households. Alberta, the richest province in Canada, has the country's highest prevalence of food insecurity in the country. The group that put together the report defines food insecurity as, quote, the inadequate or insecure access to food due to financial constraints. It's a serious public health problem, a marker of pervasive material deprivation, a matter of public policy, end quote. Here's what that means in our communities. Hundreds of thousands of Albertans can't afford a balanced diet or are worrying about running out of food before they even have the money to buy more. Some are going hungry, some are missing meals, and some may not even eat for days because of a lack of money to purchase food. I've heard in my own office uh, regularly people having to choose between buying food or paying for necessary things like medical supplies. Alberta's 107 food banks are seeing an alarming increase in the needs for their services. In my constituency of St. Albert, which is a very wealthy community, Food Bank Director Susan Creasy said the increased level of stress is palpable, and in fact they've set records for food bank usage in St. Albert. But the vital support for food banks that is provided is not the answer to food insecurity. That is only a gap filler. The latest report on household food insecurity in Canada shows Quebec has the lowest rate at 13.1%, while Alberta has the highest rate at over 20%. How can the government of the richest province in Canada allow this to happen to its citizens? Well, Valerie Tarasuk, a professor of nutritional sciences at the University of Toronto, whose research group called Proof led the study with data from StatCan, attributes Quebec's consistently lower food insecurity due to the power of provincial policy. Since forming government in 2019, the UCP has been consistent in one area, and that is absolutely ignoring the needs of Albertans. The rising cost of living and the record high inflation is impacting every Albertan in some way, and while there are those who are fortunate and have the means to ride out these challenging times, nearly a million people here in this province are struggling. Inflation hit a near 40-year high, and wage growth in Alberta has significantly lagged behind. Families are feeling the cut in real wages, and the UCP is forcing Albertans to pay more in income taxes, property taxes, utility costs, school fees, tuition, interest on student debt, park fees, and so much more. While also freezing the child and family benefit, the seniors benefit, income support, and age. They have consistently demonstrated that they are interested more in making life more difficult for Albertans. The Consumer Debt Index showed that in April, half of Albertans were just $200 away from not being able to pay their bills at the end of the month, the highest level in the country. No one living in the richest province in Canada should be having to choose whether to pay their bills or to put food on the table. For months, we've been calling on the UCP to focus on helping Albertans rather than their own internal drama. Clearly, you can see which one they've chosen. We recently urged the UCP to immediately return to the legislature with us and help reverse some of these harmful policies. We could lower income tax. We could raise benefits. We could increase grants to nonprofits. We could build more affordable housing. We could increase rebates. We could freeze tuition, we could cut the interest on student debt, and we can put back a cap on car insurance. These simple, specific actions could help so many families today. Albertans can't wait for October for a government to act. They're hurting today. They're struggling today. The UCP needs to shift their focus from themselves to helping Albertans for once. And now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Heather Sweet. Thank you, Marie. As Marie said, the UCP has abandoned Albertans, 
and fail to ensure everyone in our province has the means and opportunity to thrive. A significant change in circumstances impacted them, which causes them to seek supports. No one goes to the food bank because they suddenly have no food. Food bank directors have told us that they are no longer supporting just the most vulnerable Albertans, the low income wage earn, but also low income wage earners in our community and middle income earners in our communities. Many individuals and families who were once comfortable in the middle class wage bracket are now accessing their supports for the first time. Inflation is driving up prices everywhere. And at the grocery store, one of the most painful price increases we're seeing is for beef. Data released by the province a month ago showed the retail price of beef was up by anywhere from 11 to 43% over the same time last year, depending on the cut of beef. These price increases are pushing an important source of protein out of reach for our families, and they're harming Alberta beef producers as well. That's why our opposition has been asking who is benefiting from these high prices, because we know it's not producers and it's not Albertans. I once again call on the federal and provincial government to open an investigation into the rising price of beef and who's benefiting from it. Saskatchewan beef producers made a similar call last month. We need to get to the bottom of it and we need the province and the federal governments to bring their authority to bear on the problem. Our hearts go out to every Albertan who feels they are drowning under the weight of the cost of living crisis and of course wondering what they're going to do in the next six months. Albertans need a government that can focus on making life more affordable. There's an election coming and you can trust that the Alberta NDP government led by Rachel Notley will always focus on keeping more money in Albertans pockets. Thank you and we're happy to take your questions. Thank you. Just a reminder, if you're on Zoom, it's the raise hand function to get in the question queue. If you're on the phone, it's star nine. Uh, we'll do another pass for calls. Just a reminder, Zoom is a raise hand and the phone is star nine. Seeing none, that concludes our conference for today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching and to learn more, check out albertasfuture.ca.